Okay, this is a response to a question about the Big Bang. So, uh, how did it all start? What happened before the Big Bang? Well, the short and complete answer is we don't know. A lot of people like to tell stories that start in the beginning and go to the end. Uh, certainly that's the way it's done in the Bible. Uh, but that is not, in fact, how we actually learn about the universe. Uh, I liken it much more to a, a mystery novel. Uh, or a mystery of some sort where you come upon the scene of the crime and there's some evidence, uh, you know, cash is missing, missing from the register and the window is broken and there's a footprint outside in the uh, flower garden. Okay, you have this evidence and you need to then reconstruct, well, what events must have happened to lead up to create the scene that we've observed. So, what I'm going to try to do is give you the Reader's Digest version of the mystery of the universe. So, where do we begin? Well, first, there are galaxies all over the universe. Here's just an example from the Hubble Deep Field. So, a tiny sliver of sky about the size of uh, the eye on the face of a dime held at arm's length. It's full of galaxies, and then the entire sky is just full of galaxies. So, what about these galaxies can inform us on the nature of the universe. Well, it turns out in the uh, 1920s, 1930s, Edwin Hubble uh, compared the Doppler shift of the spectrum of these galaxies to the distance to the galaxies. And briefly what I mean by the Doppler shift of the spectrum is that you're looking for a spectrum, say hydrogen or something, so you're looking for a particular pattern of light emitted by an element. And the Doppler shift is just the notion that if you have a source emitting waves that is moving towards you, the waves will be compressed and you will observe a shorter wavelength or a bluer light. If the source is moving away from you, uh, you will observe a longer wavelength or a redder light. So that, that property was what was being compared to the distance to a galaxy. And what Hubble discovered was that all distant galaxies are moving away from us. And that the further away the galaxy is, the faster it's moving. And that this was, a, in fact, a nice linear relationship. So that the galaxy twice as far away would be moving twice as fast. A galaxy three times as far away would be moving three times as fast away from us. So this was a surprising observation. But what does it mean? Well, it can be understood as a uniform expansion of space. Now, you can think of an example of, say, the surface of a balloon, where you start to blow up a balloon a little bit, and you can put dots to represent galaxies all over it, and then now keep blowing up the balloon. You'll notice that as the balloon expands, every point is getting further away from the other points, uh, and the the further away they are, the faster they'll be moving away from each other. Uh, of course, the surface of the balloon is really a two-dimensional surface, and so you have to think of all the four space-time dimensions being compressed onto this two-dimensional sphere for this example to work out just right. So this can be thought of as a uniform expansion. And now here's a way that we can quantitatively look at this. So here we have a couple of grids showing some galaxies placed on them with the notion that the, the upper grid uh, will be at some initial time and the lower grid will be at some time later. Now if you look at the upper grid, the spacing between each of the galaxies initially is 100 megaparsecs. So let's start off considering uh, galaxy A. That's where we'll be located. If we were going to look at galaxy B, initially it would have been 100 meg megaparsecs away from us. But over this amount of time, if we look at the bottom, it would now have moved to a distance of 150 megaparsecs away from us. So over this amount of time, the galaxy has moved 50 megaparsecs. Now if we compare galaxy C, it starts off being 200 megaparsecs away, but then after some time, it is 300 megaparsecs away. So the difference there is 100 megaparsecs. So over the same amount of time, galaxy C will have appeared to move twice as far. 
as galaxy B. Likewise, if we look at uh, galaxy D, it starts off at 300 megaparsecs away from us. Then after some amount of time, it's 450 megaparsecs away from us. Comparing the difference there, that's 150 megaparsecs. So it's going to be three times as much change as between A and B. So it's three times further away. It's moving three times as fast. So if we have a uniform expansion now, everything's moving apart. Then if we look back in time asking, well, what was it like earlier and earlier in the universe? Well, everything would have been closer and closer together. So that as we look back in time, we're actually looking at a uniform compression instead of a uniform expansion. And that gives you the notion of the Big Bang singularity itself, that if you everything's moving apart now, you look back in time and it was closer and closer together, and at some point you keep going back far enough, everything would be together at one point. And that theoretical point is the Big Bang singularity. So that's the basic notion behind the Big Bang. That's it. Now you could ask, well, okay, that sounds good, but how do you know? What evidence is there to support that claim? I think the key piece of evidence is the cosmic microwave background. So in the 40s, Gamow reasoned that if the universe was indeed in this compressed state in the past, it should have been hotter. Like as you compress a gas or compress matter, it gets hotter. So it should have been more akin to the inside of a star everywhere in the universe. And that you'd have had this radiation and matter all sort of jiggling around together, interacting with each other, until you hit a point where the universe had cooled enough that the radiation and the matter decoupled, which would happen at a temperature of about 10,000 degrees. And he thought, well, there should be a uniform black body radiation field all over the universe that would correspond to the time when it was that hot, you know, roughly 10,000 degree uh, gas everywhere. Well, in the 60s, uh, Penzias and Wilson, working at Bell Labs, were working on microwave technology and microwave satellite communications. And they kept detecting some strange background noise in any direction they pointed their microwave uh, antenna into the sky. There was this weird fuzzy background noise, and they just could not explain it. And they double-checked all their equipment, and sure enough, it was just there in the sky. So they contacted uh, Princeton University, and I believe it was Witten there, who realized, uh-oh, this might, you know, we've been scooped. They've found it, the, the microwave background radiation. So the COBE satellite was designed in the 1980s to actually measure this microwave radiation to see if it matched a theoretical black body curve, which would be the distribution of radiation emitted from just the in internal temperature of an object. So any object that has a non-zero temperature emits black body radiation. And that's exactly what was observed to an incredibly high degree of precision. Everywhere you look in the sky, you have a uniform black body radiation field corresponding to a temperature of about 3 degrees Kelvin because the universe itself has expanded and cooled so all that light would have expanded and cooled along with the expansion of the universe. So there it is, evidence of a, a more compact hot state of the universe in the past. But there are also other pieces of evidence to support the, the Big Bang theory as well. Elemental abundance ratios, the large-scale structure of the universe. All of these observations support the theory of the Big Bang. I haven't gotten into dark matter. I didn't get into dark energy. I didn't get into how you would look at supernova distances, or any of that. There's a lot of details. I've really given you the Reader's Digest version. Uh, hopefully it's enough to give you a framework with, in which you can go on to learn more for yourself when you want to read about these topics.